Hello everybody, Robleshock here bringing you another video. I want to thank you all for viewing in. I mean, and I want to talk about uh, last night, yeah, last night's pay-per-view. Actually, both weekends, this past weekend's pay-per-view. NXT War Games and Survivor Series. Now, I got a chance to watch the highlights of War Games first. And... That was insane. War Games was absolutely great. I, I, I freaking loved it. What Dakota Kai did, when Mia Yim couldn't be able to be in the be in the late women's War Games match, and what the, she was changed with Dakota Kai, and then when it was Dakota Kai's turn to go out, step into the cage. Oh man, she went, she went right after her friend in the cage. Holy shit, what a turnabout. And that triple threat match, oh man, that was good. But in the end, Pete Dunne won. And he did earn the right to go after Adam Cole's uh, heavyweight title at Survivor Series, which was last night. And we will get to that in a minute. But the rest of the Undisputed Era up against Champa's team, it was a shocker to see that Kevin Owens was the final recipient, the final, the final partner in Ch on Champa's team. And because of that, because of Kevin Owens' oh, involvement, Champa's team won against the end of the Spirited Era. I loved it. The whole entire War Games was great. Now, let's go past War Games. Well, let's concentrate on Survivor Series. Survivor Series was pretty good. I was shocked. Um, the... The... First, the uh, WWE Championship against Brock Lesnar and Rey Mysterio in a no hold bar match was good. I mean, Rey Mysterio grabbed the lead pipe and Brock Lesnar left the ring. And I'm like, what the hell? Brock, I don't know why Brock Lesnar stepped out of the ring just because Rey Mysterio brought in a lead pipe. I mean, Brock Lesnar, what? Could just shrug that away after when he gets hit, but he did, and most of the match went to Brock Lesnar. And when it was coming to a point where Brock Lesnar was going to finish off Rey Mysterio, Mysterio's son came out of nowhere, and while Brock Lesnar had Rey Mysterio's son up in a, in a chokehold or whatever. Rey still came behind, up a cup from underneath, and that gave them both Dominic and Rey Mysterio the opportunity to go out to, to finish off Brock Lesnar, and almost did it, almost did it, but in the end, Brock Lesnar proved that he was too much, but he was still battered and bruised. Now, I just want to know who's going to be the next one who's going to stand up to Brock Lesnar and be the next WWE Champion. Are we going to uh, uh, still have Seth Rollins go out to Brock Lesnar? Or is it going to be somebody new like um, Drew McIntyre? We'll see if that, we'll, we'll see when time comes. Uh, and... Let's, let's also change the direction of the Universal title. Universal title match was nothing all but the Fiend in the beginning. From start to like in the middle, it was all the Fiend. And then Daniel Bryan was coming back. He was getting the rebound. But in the end, the Fiend won with the Manable Claw. Um, now, who's going to be next to go up against The Fiend? 
on SmackDown? Don't know. I would like to say Braun Strowman. Honestly. I mean, come on. He needs a world. He needs a, a world title around his waist. He has won the tag team championship twice with two different partners. Now he needs a, a heavyweight title gold around his waist. I just want to know who it when is um well, when is WWE going to give Roman that, that chance, huh? When in the world are they going to give Strowman that kind of a chance? <sighs> okay, uh, let's go ahead. Let's go to the women's where it was five on five on five. Raw, SmackDown, and NXT. Um, Asuka was doing well. Doing our own, but then Charlotte tagged herself in. And we all know how much of a glory hog Charlotte is. We all know. That's why she, she, she tagged herself in. She wanted to win the, the whole entire match for Raw on the women's division on her own. Plain and simple. But in the end... Ray Ripley's team won, so I didn't get to watch the kickoff show, but what I've heard that it was like a tag team battle royal kind of thing, and I kind of forgot who won. Oh yeah, it was Rude and Ziggler who won that tag team battle royal. Why they well, I don't know why they changed it or whatnot. You know, I thought it was going to be um, the Raw Tag Team Champion Viking Raiders against the SmackDown Tag Team Champions of New Day and the NXT. Tag Team Champions, Undisputed Era. I don't know why the hell it changed it. I really don't know why. Freaking stupid. They always do that. They always have to change something like that on the fly. It would have been just fine with the Viking Raiders against New Day against Undisputed error. It would be fun like that, but no, they have to change it up as usual. But I digress. Survivor Series was still pretty good. And oh, to the men's um, Survivor Series elimination. I was getting sick and tired of Baron Corbin. I don't know how about you guys, but I got sick and tired of Baron Corbin. Because he, he, he wants to be the glory hog, just like Charlotte Flair was for her team. Okay, Baron Corbin wanted to bark orders and be the friggin' coach, the team, everything. He wanted the glory for his team to finish. But then, at the end, he finally got what he deserved and Baron Corbin was pinned. Plain and simple. Oh yeah, let's not forget the match at War Games between Riddle and Finn Balor. That was great match. That was, oh, that was such a good match. But Finn Balor won at the end. But I wouldn't mind seeing those two go at it again. Now back to the Survivor Series. Sorry about that. Didn't mean to jump to another ship like that. But I just remember that. Ow! I'll tend to do that and I apologize. But in the end, but it was good though. Re Rollins and Reigns teamed up to get rid of NXT. Now it was good. I would like 
for at least somebody to do that. Didn't I just say that Raw and SmackDown needs to team up in order to get rid of NXT? And what happened? Most of the teams never did it. Raw did it at a certain point when they were going after, you know, Strowman. Strowman. But it just ended right there. It stopped. But Reigns and Rollins, they had the right idea. They both teamed up to go out and take out NXT. They did. They took out Ciampa. And at the end, it was between Lee and Reigns. And Reigns won it by sparing Lee. But at the end, I liked it where Reigns and Lee fist bumped. Given Reigns showing Lee the respect he deserves. Because, man, that size has great agility. Man. And let's forget uh, the last end, end match of the evening was the women's champions, Raw women's champion, Becky Lynch, against NXT women's champion, Shayna Baszler, and... SmackDown Women's Champion Bailey. I want to go on record that Bailey did a pretty good job on hanging in there and being tough and sticking it out. We're going up against Bailey, going up against Shayna Baszler. Excuse me, but at War Games, everybody saw. What Dakota Kai did at War Games, okay? And in my opinion, the Bailey needs to be more like Dakota Kai, okay? Dakota Kai was like Bailey in the beginning. All nice, positive attitude, and all that, and she did have a fine spirit like Bailey and all. But I think at the end, Dakota Kai just couldn't take it anymore. So, she really went aggressive. That's what Bailey needs. She needs to be aggressive and tough and everything else like Dakota Kai did when she took out one of her partners at War Games. That's what, who Bailey needs to be. And if you want to do it anymore, she needs to be like Shayna Baszler. Now, Shayna Baszler was smart. She took out Becky Lynch and focused on Bailey. And then <clears throat> Bailey got out of the container, got out of Shayna Baszler's submission hold a couple of times, but at the final point towards the match, Bailey couldn't reverse it or anything, and Shayna Baszler won. And I liked what Becky Lynch did. She showed. Becky Lynch, that, who is still the man, and Becky Lynch showed Baszler, but I, but in my opinion, I don't think it's going to, the, the thing between ba ba Baszler and Lynch is over. They might have something, story might go on between Lynch and Baszler, but I don't know. But we'll just wait and see. But like I said, working off was great. No doubt about it. And what I also heard on YouTube was that Cody Rhodes got a little bit enraged because last Wednesday... WWE NXT got more ratings than AWE Dynamite did. And uh, granted, AEW was good, but NXT was better. You know why? Because they had Raw and SmackDown charge into NXT. NXT came with the open doors, and Hunter said that holy doors wide open in NXT. They you'd calm down and face us, and that's what Raw and SmackDown did.
but I just wish I would see more team up from Raw and SmackDown trying to eliminate Gale Head up against at the team of NXT, but they didn't. And it still makes me pissed off that they did not have the 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 tag team Survivor Series matchup they were supposed to have against the Viking Raiders, against the New Day, and against the Undisputed Era. They did not have that. And that, oh, they shouldn't have done that. They could have had that, but no. They took that out. That's the only thing that I'm pissed off about that. Other than that, the rest of the matches were pretty good. Survivor Series was pretty good in my point of view. I, in my opinion, I would give it a smack down in the middle. And a, a raw average. Sometimes I just wish WWE would sometimes get their act together. You know? I don't know. But, it is what it is, it was pretty good pay-per-views on, on this week, on this weekend, past weekend of the WWE. It was, both wrestling programs were pretty good, but NXT's was a little bit better than Survivor Series. Just, hands down. Oh. <sighs> I think I'm going to end the video here. I will see you guys in my next video. With that being said, that's uh, I'll go end the video here. And with that being said, that's the bottom line because I said so.